Okay guys, very quick video this week. I wanna do a quick intro so we can get right into it. I'm Tati, I'm an editor, and this week's video, we're gonna be talking about how I get my quality on my edits. People have always said that my quality is really good. I don't really think I believe them. I think there's better quality out there, but um, I always get asked this question. So I also want to say that my quality is very consistent with the coloring. If I have a good coloring, the quality will look good. And then I just kind of add my little topaz and my sharpen and it makes it even better. So make sure you guys have good scenes. I'm gonna explain all of it in the video, but yeah, enjoy. Hello there. Like most editors, I have a pay hip. Now, granted, most of the things on my pay hip, I already have tutorials on my YouTube channel for. However, if you're lazy or just wanna support me, I have a numerous amount of resources and presets on my pay hip. That includes my popular glitch style pack, my shake pack, and even colorings, plus more. If the prices are too much for you, you are not obligated to buy it. But if you do, thank you so much and enjoy. Hi guys, welcome back to yet another tutorial about TikTok edits in today's video. As I said, I'm gonna be showing you how I do my quality for my edits. I get a lot of compliments on my quality. For some reason, I don't think my quality is the best thing ever, but you guys always seem to ask about it. So I'm finally doing a tutorial about it today. How I got these settings and came to these conclusions is just by looking up other quality tutorials, seeing what other people differ their quality and just kind of combining everything. These quality settings are nothing special. It's how everybody else is doing them. I add to Topaz in my edits now. I used to think that Topaz wasn't really the most amazing thing in the world people were saying it was, but then once I added Topaz to my edits, I couldn't stop. Topaz is a game changer and I recommend it for sure. Um, as long as it doesn't look like a cartoon character, keep your Topaz settings on the low key and Topaz can be super beneficial. I can't tell you how to get Topaz for free, but there are resources out there online somewhere. I just can't really say much because of the YouTube policies. Firstly, I want to say the most important stuff to your quality is the original quality of your scene. Okay, make sure your scenes are at least 1080p to 4k. 4k is obviously the best option for you. That's kind of what most people use when they have really good quality they have 4k scenes and this edit i use 4k scenes be careful where you get your scene packs from okay i don't recommend getting your scene packs from youtube if you do use the application 4k downloader to get the best quality out of it on um, youtube it just i don't fully trust that it'll keep its quality unless there's like that 4k setting there's a bunch of scene pack accounts on instagram that's kind of where people get their scenes typically so i went over the quality of your scenes now we're gonna go to rendering so i use a mac i don't know how different it is with windows but for my rendering i go to file export and then add to render i used to use adobe media encoder but the process for rendering with adobe media encoder was absolutely feral after effects 2022 and media encoder they don't mix for me okay it took forever to render to be honest i'm not sure if the quality is that different anyway and then i go to high quality i turn the audio on and i just keep everything the same the format is quick time it's Apple Pro Res 4 22. People say playing your edit in full before you render it can definitely help. I don't really do that. I kind of just eyeball it. Then obviously I pick where I want it to be. I typically like to put it in downloads and then I let this render. I'm going to let this render and I will come back to you guys as soon as it's done and we'll begin to pass. So this is my second step to getting the quality that I have in my edits. So I put my video in Topaz. I have a couple Topaz settings I like to choose from. I'm going to show you the one that I typically use. Like I said, I kind of leached off from other people's topaz settings and just made it my own but the first thing we do is enable enchantment ai video type is going to be progressive and then the ai model is going to stay you know enhance and then the perimeters is actually going to change to manual okay so this is where we can do some editing fixed compression is between 80 and 85 and then improve detail is going to be between 60 and 65 um sharpen is going to be around 30 to 35 and then reduce noise is between 20 to 25 i keep this one at zero and then i keep this one at like between 11 and 15. Add noise, I keep at zero, and then recover detail is like 65. And then I enable grain, and I put the amount at one, and then the size at one. Of course, depending again on the quality of your clip, you can, you know, make these settings higher or lower, depending on what you want. And if you want to preview what it looks like, you just click preview two seconds, and then it'll show you the differences once it's rendered. As you can see here, it's more smoother on this side than it is on that side. I keep everything the same for exporting, except I just 
turn the audio mode off because for some reason it won't render it with the audio on and it doesn't take me that long to render at all just so you know if it takes you like a billion light years you might have an old topaz version just saying and then my third step is going to be after i actually edit the edit and that comes in my coloring so that will be step three and the last step of this tutorial okay guys so we're at the last step step three which is coloring i think that my coloring kind of carries my quality for the most part besides the topaz of course i use a lot of brightening effects with my coloring and i think that gives the illusion of good quality when scenes aren't dark uh that's just kind of what i think i don't know if there's any science behind it but um so we're gonna do my sharpening make sure your coloring doesn't have any crazy effects try to stay away from grain if you use grain it has to be part of like the aesthetic and not be a crazy amount okay so for this type of coloring as you can see it already looks pretty good but i'll add sharpen 10 just to kind of give those details a bit of purpose but if i really really want to do like a full out quality i use two types of sharpenings s sharpen which is in the sapphire plugin and unsharp mask and i add it to my clip i didn't fully uh loop my edit yet so i'm just showing you on one clip but just remember to pre-compose your entire edit and put these settings on there so i do 50 and then i make the radius 0 0.5 okay and then i will look up s sharpen and i literally just keep it like this now if the s sharpen is too much like as you can see because i have grain on this coloring even though i just said don't add grain and this is one of the reasons why um since i have grain on it i'll have to turn the sharpen amp down because it can't just be too much um yeah you can turn it down and then this is kind of like what it'll look like and yeah guys that is how i do my quality in three steps and i hope you guys enjoy you can go back to regular tati now and also edit these settings if they don't look good for you okay these are just like what looks good on my edits but it could look different on yours and my computer's about to die so you can go back to real life tati thank you guys for watching this video i hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial hopefully your quality gets better after this um if it doesn't i guess i failed um and yeah that is really it okay love you bye Mwah.